Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books. Total panic over at Disney and Marvel. Disney understands now that their Marvel titles are not working and that their woke approach is not really coming together well. Uh, it's, it's become obvious. They've had a lot of failures. She-Hulk's, of course, the most recent failure. People just hate it. It's damaged the whole uh, Marvel brand for Disney. But they know they've got examples from Star Wars where it's no longer even a theatrical property. They can't even do a Star Wars movie and know that it's going to be successful. It's become a risk. They didn't pay $4 billion for Star Wars for it to be a risk. And they also didn't pay $40 billion for Marvel for it to be a risk. This is, this is something that's become too obvious for them to ignore. And it's not like very publicly noted right now. There's a great article in Bounding Into Comics. It's a great uh, website and YouTube channel um, talking about a video that Doomcock did, if you know who he is. But uh, there's a lot of information on it. There's also a couple of articles from thatparkplace.com. Great uh, website, great resource. Hollywood is shifting away from woke before it kills them because they've seen the results. And okay, there are gonna be citations of results in here. Also, another article on thatparkplace.com, the worst September box office in nearly 30 years, bleeds into October. And, you know, the numbers don't lie. You can get bad numbers. You can say, oh, well, you know, pandemic this or that. And, oh, well, there were haters out on this. And, oh, well, you know, people didn't want to go see that movie Bros. And, uh, but, you know, it was a good movie. And it, it that works, like, for, you know, a little while. But... After the storm clouds really start gathering and it starts to really become apparent. And then when outside investors start attacking the company like Dan Loeb publicly saying nothing about woke. But as I said, when we were just talking about Dan Loeb a few weeks ago, he's very well aware Dan Loeb, the guy's a billionaire. He's sharp. These guys know what's going on. He knows what they're doing to the brands over at uh, Disney. And he got... Um, an activist that he's the activist investor, Dan Loeb, got Disney to add a new board member. Now, a new board member doesn't necessarily mean they're going to change all direction and things, but it's it's a substantial piece. Now, alternatively, another investor, uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, made, did a great job with an extensive letter talking about woke culture and how woke culture really has absolutely no business at Disney. I covered this investor letter uh, in this video. I read the entire letter. It's actually very long, but really well written. Uh, he did a great job. He absolutely pointed out uh, the woke content makes no sense for Disney. There's no market for it. And particularly inexcusable was Disney's attack on the state of Florida and their loss. There's no commercial purpose for Disney to do that whatsoever. And uh, Vivek Ramaswamy asked him for an answer. And uh, Vivek is not a billionaire. He's not as um, influential as Dan Loeb is, the activist investor. However, a couple of these guys getting together and making the same statements really puts Disney in a position where they can't continue to mess up all their brands. Now, I'm not saying they're going to fix them overnight. I'm not saying they're redoing and, and fixing the comics or what are they doing. I don't exactly know what they're doing. We're going to cover a couple of the articles that look at what they seem like they're doing. Uh, but there's just so much of it they can defend. I did this other video, Woke Toys Not Selling. This was um, also from an insider uh, at Disney. And a, a number of YouTube people covered this. And, um, you know, the, the, the Woke products are not selling at stores. It is affecting, affecting Disney's licensing and it's putting Disney into a position where they have to prove that they have successful upcoming projects to toy companies. That's one insight I see missing uh, actually from Doomcock and uh, Bounding Into Comics. They covered it all very well. But one of the things they get into Bounding Into Comics and uh, Doomcock is how uh, Disney is now using... Um, you know, a question and answer and a lot of consumer research to figure out what to do with remaking the X-Men. And they've told toy companies, oh, well, this is going to be our new push. You know, we're going to develop the X-Men and we're going to push the X-Men out. And they're going to not just go on what Kevin Feige says, because they know they can't trust Kevin Feige anymore. It's not like Feige knows what's going to work or not going to work. Um, 
they've now gone to this, this consumer feedback. And the consumer feedback is gonna do a few things. One, it's gonna allow them to make their case with licensees, to be able to say, listen, if you produce and market merchandise based on these characters, it should do better than this mess. And the research information, that's, that's not that unique. That's something that you do when you need to prove your case uh, to a client and to be able to say, listen, these are essentially like testimonials. This is what people want. So it's okay, we're going in this direction. But for them to be reduced to that level, to not just say, hey, look, it's the next Marvel thing. You know it's gonna be big. Give us a fortune in licensing fees and promote the hell out of it. They can't do that anymore. That piece is broken. They broke it. But they're at least aware that they broke it. It doesn't mean they're gonna make great content or good content. I think we're, we should expect to see Warner Bros. Discovery come out with great DC branded content. I don't know what Black Adam is gonna do. You know, it's supposed to do relatively well. We'll all find out soon. But the future things they develop are going to be good. Okay, let's get into the article. Before we do, please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up when you like it. You guys have been great. The channel's doing great. Really, really appreciate you. Thank you so much for doing that. All right, from bounding into comics, Marvel Studios rumored to reshape the X-Men for this new era wants Halle Berry to reprise role as Storm. A new rumor claims that Marvel Studios plans to put the focus on the X-Men, but it might not be the X-Men most of us know and love. Rather, the rumor claims Marvel Studios plans to reshape the franchise for a new era. Now, as I was saying, it's, it's very possible that um, they know what they should do, but they still need to prove their case. And they also need to prove their case to licensors, but also be able to defend what they're doing. And that is something that is important um, in all levels of um, business and all levels of management. You have to prove that your decisions, while there might be some instinct involved, have some basis in reality. And it used to be that, you know, Disney could just say, well, listen, Kevin Feige has this success. We've got this history. We've got this momentum but it's clear that they don't recently have the momentum and the success that they would claim to have. So just, just say, listen, we don't need the data. Obviously, success uh, doesn't lie. Well, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of success recently. So the rumor comes from Scooper WDW Pro by way of YouTuber Overlord DVD. And uh, WW Pro is uh, constantly posting on thatparkplace.com. Uh, great articles and great source of information. Overlord DVD details the rumor. According to his sources, Marvel's delay of Blade was necessary due to the now public issues heading for the production. However, the delay was also an opportunity to delay other opportunities that needed more time due to contractual issues and without having to provide any other reason beyond a reshuffling. He received this several days ago, and this is what he was told. He was told the Disney partners in merchandising have all been given notice that X-Men is the next big thing for the MCU. This is probably, you know, 99% chance. Why would that not be the case? So I, I'd certainly believe that. Teams of researchers, focus groups, etc., are all determining how the X-Men should be reshaped for this new era. Overlord DVD then provided some examples. Does Wolverine smoke? He should. Does Gambit? Why not? How do other characters' vices or orientations come into play with the audiences? A little later, you know, even Warner Brothers Discovery, which I, I think is doing some great things now, obviously, um, they had some movie posters where they took cigars and cigarettes out of the characters' hands and out of their mouths on movie posters, remaking the movie posters. Uh, that's ridiculous. I, I, I mean... I, I don't know, tell me what you think of that in the comments below. I, I, that's unforgivably nonsensical. But this is the world we live in now, I suppose. A little later in the video, he continues, and of course, uh, Overlord DVD's uh, video is in uh, this link to this article, so I'll be sure that uh, I get it to you so you can check it out uh, for yourself. He, he, does, he has a great channel, you should definitely subscribe to it. A little later in the video, he continues the scoop he received from WDW, Pro, Marvel knows that all the audience participation is down. 
I mean, it's pretty obvious. That's the key start stat to know about. It doesn't matter if they have equal or higher revenues during a time of heavy inflation. And that's because during inflation, the prices for everything are up. So if you have 20% uh, more, 30% more revenue, okay, but what does that do to inflation? It's because everything is more expensive. That means more revenue. Like everyone notices you're spending more at the gas pump, you're spending more buying groceries. It doesn't mean that groceries are just doing great. It means everything costs more. That pushes revenues up. It matters if people are going to Marvel movies and if they're buying Marvel merchandise. The answer to both of those, according to multiple sources, is that they are diminishing. Diminishing. That's not even to touch on the situation with Disney Plus, MCU live action problems. It's a lot of live action problems. So Feige finds himself in a new place. The X-Men will not simply be put into the market under the direction of himself and his directors and his writers. They're, so power is slipping away from Feige. So as power slips away from Feige, that's Feige losing his grip on Marvel and it's you know bringing his tenure at Marvel closer to an end. I've heard nothing about Feige actually leaving Marvel, so not to get too excited, but if these other people are gonna come in and start dictating to him what needs to happen and what doesn't need to happen, it, it's showing he doesn't have the power he used to have. They are getting focus grouped. This is an all hands on deck situation to repopularize the MCU. Disney and Chapek do not want Marvel becoming Star Wars, a franchise that is theatrically dead and commercially no longer evergreen. Evergreen meaning that they can always count on it to make money. They ruined it. I mean, they should really get out and publicly apologize for it and say, look, we're going to take as many years as it takes to bring Star Wars back and do it the right way. And they'd get a lot of respect. And then people would know that they can trust them going forward, that at least these guys get that there's a problem. They do get that there's a problem. They're not sure what to do about it. But what's great is, you know, it's almost like um, people get into a dispute and you need someone to sort of stand in between the two people and say, hey, let me hear you from both sides, like a judge almost, and just kind of provide insight on what the way forward might be without bias to one side or the other. Numbers don't lie. Now, this focus group stuff, you know, they may decide, oh, you know, Wolverine has to stop being tough and he'd be better off if he was a woman. God knows what the results are going to come from in any of these focus groups, but it shows that they don't have the answer and they know they don't have the answer. And they, at least if this failure continues at uh, Disney Marvel and Star Wars, at least they have something they could point to and say, well, the focus group said it would, this would work. They need someone else to give them some cover. After providing some brief commentary, he continued the scoop by saying the delay in some of these films, especially Secret Wars, is convenient for Marvel and Disney because it buys them time on the research side, but also in acquiring the talent they want. So they're adding and they're trying to get key talent back. And, and they're right to assume that by getting you know Hugh Jackman back and um, Halle Barry back, these kinds of things are gonna only help the movies have some additional chance of success. But you see what happens, they broke their momentum. Things were going along, they were going along fine, and they took advantage of it for their own desires to put in woke influences. And then they spread those woke influences everywhere, literally everywhere. And then they wondered like, well, where, where'd the momentum go? It's like, well, the, the momentum went that this woke stuff didn't work. There are other big actors, uh, he's told, related to X-Men that they don't have yet and they want to acquire prior to the script. Specifically, he does not believe that they have Halle Berry signed on yet to reprise Storm. And multiple sources tell me they're hearing, they're working on that at this time. They also want Famke ja Jansen, be Jansen because they want Dark Phoenix to be a plot device in the multiverse. Well, that makes sense. Just do it right. You know, there are Marvel editors from back in the day could give you some really good insight on where uh, Dark Phoenix would belong in the storyline. Jim Salakrup is one, Jim Shooter is another. They could easily be involved. I, I don't know why they don't reach out to the people that really know the characters and really know the stories and really know um, 
character interactions and things like that and have you know an overview because fans know what they like and what they don't like but a fan can't necessarily tell you you know how should these how should like this character die what would be appropriate um actually Salakrup and I were talking Jim Salakrup and we were talking about um uh, Phoenix and and I don't even remember the entire story but Phoenix dying when she died uh in the 1980s for the first time and um she had to die and the reason why she had to die was because of all the bad things she did it just she did too much bad stuff she had to die um and a fan is not going to tell you that a character they love is going to die i would have never told you i want frank miller to kill electra in the original uh, introduction of electra but i understand why the character should have died of course they had to bring her back too popular, but at least let the storyline end and end appropriately. That's editorial insight. And that's something we need in comic stories. It's obviously something you need in any stories. People have to have kind of a, an overview of this. Let me know what you think of all that in the comments below. Finally, I'm told they may already have Patrick Stewart signed on for multiple movies as Professor X, but they also want his likeness in the same way they have Mark Hamill and James Earl Jones's voice. You can imagine why they'd want Patrick Stewart's version of Professor X for per perpetuity. Yes, I could imagine that. He was great. Next, he also stated, remember that the lesson was, remember that what the lesson was from Solo for right or wrong? Audiences want to see the original actors playing the characters they're known for. That was the Kathleen Kennedy takeaway. But Marvel has hit a snag in acquiring everyone they need for the multiverse saga. Getting Hugh Jackman was a big deal. Getting Andrew Garfield, which I'm, he's told is basically uh, done, is a big deal. I don't even necessarily agree with this. You know, I, I thought they recast Star War, uh, Star Trek pretty well. It's it's how you treat the material. It's it's not just the actor. Obvious. I mean, I don't know. Tell me if I'm wrong. Getting this next wave of Marvel heroes to successfully launch is a decade, two decade impact. The rumor states, and Phase Four was essentially a failure at creating any momentum. So that means it's a total failure. Marvel has had to exact a requirement that some retailers take phase four merchandise bundled with Avengers merch because otherwise the retailers won't sell the C tier character towels, mugs, and action figures. Yeah, that was covered. Uh, we covered that in this story that they forced other stuff that nobody wanted into assortments of the few things that people did want. Some of these delays are not reshuffling, but instead an opportunity to get contracts finalized for big names to bring back original actors where needed. The rumor reiterates, right? That makes sense. It's because you have to wonder, like, what is it with the, the constant delays and reshuffling of Marvel's uh, film slate? And the delays and, you know, they should know what, it's a lot of projects, no question about it but they kind of should know what they're doing. So when they announce a release date, it shouldn't need to move. You know, if there's a, a death or something like, okay, you understand that. Um, but there really shouldn't be a lot of movement. There's more movement than there should be. And, and this, maybe this makes some sense, but what also makes some sense is they really need to figure out how to execute on this stuff. Because if they don't, they've already lost the momentum until they get momentum back, until they get people excited and things are moving forward and people are really curious and interested to see what they're going to do um, and, and continue to care about their stuff, it's it's a big problem. I, they could have a massive, massive collapse. I mean, they had that with Star Wars. So why wouldn't they have that with all the Marvel films coming? They really need to turn this around. They were aware they're in trouble. But maybe they don't know how much trouble they're in. It's at least nice to know that they have a problem behind closed doors. The Victorio Alonso strategies just haven't materialized in success. Why would you have not gone to people? I, again, I go back to this, like I have so much respect for editorial, you know, because the talent is amazing. I have tremendous, unlimited respect for the creatives that create particularly comic books. I am blown away by creatives, artists, writers, inkers, letters, colorists, like the people putting it together and making it amazing. Production design people, graphic designers can make all the difference. Um, but editorial has to direct all of it. That's the foundation of all this. So I, I, why they're listening to Victoria Alonso about what they should be doing 
rather than people who've been able to actually sell the comics over the years, I do not know. They can't get rid of She-Hulk, Ms. Marvel, and Moon Knight merchandise. They're ready to transition to actual money makers and they're desperate to get it right, he concluded. They need better information. The idea that Marvel Studios is moving forward with the X-Men makes a lot of sense. They did recently announce Deadpool 3 with Hugh Jackman reprising his role as Wolverine. There is buzz about that. I'm looking forward to that. On top of that announcement, Hollywood Reporter revealed that they pushed back Fantastic Four to February 14th, 2025 from November 8th, 2024 and moved back Avengers Secret Wars from November 7th, 2025 to May 1st, 2026. It was also teased that Ms. Marvel might actually be a mutant, oh no, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, despite being an inhuman in the comics. I, do you even, tell me what you think in the comments below. Do you even consider Ms. Marvel part of the Marvel Universe, like on any level at all? I, I mean, I just look at this, I'm like, okay, well, no, not really, not to me. I don't consider this character to be part of Marvel whatsoever. But that's just me. Bruno informs Kamala. Kamala, there's something different in your genes, like a mutation. While he's telling her this is a sample of the X-Men animated series theme song playing in the background. Okay. So the anim okay, the X-Men animated series is playing in the background. I no one's gonna care about this. As for the parts of the maybe just focus on the things that people obviously care about. They care about Deadpool. They care about Wolverine. They do care about the real X-Men, not whatever they might turn it into. They're interested in that. Why not do more with Colossus? You know, there's a lot you can do. They care about Professor X. They tell you people, you can tell what fans care about. As for the parts of the rumor regarding Marvel wanting actors to reprise their role, that also appears to be right out of their playbook as they had both Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield reprised their role as Peter Parker and Spider-Man in the Spider-Man No Way Home blockbuster movie. That worked. The movie was good. Patrick Stewart also reprised his role as Professor X in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Similarly, Marvel also had Evan Peters show up in WandaVision as Pietro Maximoff. Albeit that cameo was turned into a lewd joke, representative of just how far Marvel Studios has fallen in such a quick time. While Overlord DVD seems to be optimistic about this new rumor, if it is indeed true, Marvel Studios has shown not a shred of evidence of changing course, not yet. In fact, there's an argument to be made that they've actually doubled down with She-Hulk on ins insulting what used to be their core fans. That's true, um, but I've been reading a bit more on the She-Hulk situation. I did a video on it recently. It, you know, it looks like they were aware by at least like episode three or four that She-Hulk was dead. It was not going to get renewed. And um, obviously fans hating it and speaking openly about how they hated what they did with She-Hulk had a big um, part of the negative publicity, but also the disinterest to continue She-Hulk. Disney can do whatever they want. They can do whatever. They have lots of money. They're going to continue to have lots of money for a long time. Not for a thousand years, but for, you know, the next five years or so, they could, if they want to burn this to the ground, they could burn every theatrical franchise they have doing whatever woke stuff they want to do and then be completely wiped out five years from now. It doesn't look like they're going to do that. It, they don't have such a passion to destroy the company as to do that. They have to have some expectations to subvert. So it, it looks like, um, you know, this nonsense with She-Hulk is a little bit of a wake-up call. They have to like be a little bit more responsive at the least. But the redevelopment of X-Men, for example, is something where it's like, well, now we're going to take some of the decisions away from Feige. That's a good idea. And more of that, of being able to, to prove out a, a, their case of whatever it is that they think is actually going to be uh, desired by fans and is going to actually work. The upcoming Black Panther Wakanda Forever film also decided to insult fans by casting Tena Huerta as Namor and then completing, completely changing the origin story of the Atlanteans. Yeah, that's ridiculous. In fact, they aren't even Atlanteans anymore. They're now from a city called Tolokan. And instead of being inspired by the Greek philosopher Plato's words, Timaeus and Critias, it's inspired by Mesoamerican cultures. 
Oh my God. Why? You know, it's just, just nonsensical pandering at the expense of people that actually care about the content. Now, what's funny is supposedly Black Panther is um, tracking to open it like $175 million or something worldwide, which would be great for them if it did. We'll see what happens. Director Ryan Coulter makes this absurdly clear when he states, in our story, he represents Tolokan, a hidden underwater civilization that is our reimagined version of the comic book realm of Atlantis. Okay, yeah, he doesn't look, this is supposed to be Namor? This looks like the son that Namor is disappointed in. Aside from all these points, Disney CEO Bob Chapek also made it abundantly clear that the goal of the company is to groom young children and indoctrinate viewers into disordered and immoral lifestyles. Well, um, it, it, there are some really unfortunate things going on with Disney. So I have to say there's, they really have some work to do to fix the company and hopefully they start doing it fast. In an email to Disney employees in February in response to a bill in Florida that banned the grooming of children in public schools from kindergarten through third grade in February, uh, Chapek wrote, quote, and because this struggle is much bigger than any one bill in any one state, I believe the best way for our company to bring about lasting change is through the inspiring content we produce, the welcoming culture we create, and the diverse community organizations we support. Chapek continued, there's a reason content is at the top of this list. For nearly a century, our company's stories have opened minds, inspired dreams, and shown the world both as it is, is and how we wish it could be and now more than ever represent an incredible diversity of our society. Uh-huh. Bob, you better not write a letter like that again. I, I, don't, I don't think this is that, all of that was not being well received. But that was February. This is October. They've seen the results of what they've done over the last year. And that little don't say gay blow up with Florida has cost Disney an ink absolutely incalculable sum of money. It's not a, a billion or $2 billion. They lost their tax district for their theme parks in Florida, something that you can't replace with money over this battle that they lost. That they This is handled very well by um, Vivek Ramaswamy's letter. He, he just so does such a great job of explaining like, this bill has absolutely nothing to do with anything to do with Disney's business whatsoever in Florida or anywhere else. So explain how it's in the fiduciary interest, the financial interest of your shareholders that you should be fighting with the governments of states over political things that have nothing to do with any of your content and any of the business operations. No response, obviously, but uh, since then, a new board member was added because of the work of Dan Loeb and po possibly also of Vivek Ramaswamy. I'm sure they've talked um, and there are more investors looking at Disney, large investors that are seeing bad results on the stock and, and it matters at a certain point. We're telling important stories, raising voices, and I believe changing hearts and minds, he added. Well, it's an interesting story. Um, I do tend to believe that they are using focus groups. I tend to believe that they want to bring back these cast members. Bringing back the original cast members to the extent it's possible is going to help the films. It's going to add credibility to the films and make you feel like it's a continuation of something that was you know, that you were interested in in the past. Uh, that helps. Um, it's just going to really matter. Like, do you really get any focus group results? that can give you a direction that just says, stop it with the woke stuff. Because they realized, like literally they destroyed the Star Wars theatrical brand and they destroyed the Star Wars toy uh, empire. Star Wars was like the biggest toy. It was generating a fortune. They ruined it. They could ruin Marvel. They may have already ruined Marvel. You'll know. I mean, the, the immediate thing we have to look for is have they created any interest. They've got interest in Wolverine appearing with Deadpool 3, in Deadpool 3 with Deadpool. They've got interest in that. They do. But there's a lot of other garbage they have. So if they resolve themselves to fix this, can they fix this? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think they could fix it. 
but they actually have to work on fixing it and forget about all the social justice agenda stuff. They know they have big problems over there. They, they really do. We'll see what happens. All right, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. And I will see you again soon with another video. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.